If you watch my first video, you'll recall that it was about repairing my Jet JWL 1236 variable speed lathe. Well, I sold it. It's time to move on. There's another lathe. It's kind of an off-brand with questionable reviews. It's a Win 3427. It has variable speed, has reverse, and it looks like a nice lathe on, on paper. It only has a few reviews, and some of them are kind of bad, like the lathe doesn't work. But some other reviews that where the lathe is functional are really positive. So I'm taking a risk and I'm buying that. I found it at Home Depot for just over $400, 402 something, while the regular price is about 470 So that'll be here next Thursday. So in the meantime, what I need to do is build a lathe stand. And that's what this video is about. It's not so much showing you how I build it as about the design and some of the construction techniques that I'm going to use. So I'm not going to show cutting the wood, you know how to cut wood, but I'm going to just kind of tell you how it's going to be put together. And I've already started. So this is the design. I'm going to bring this up to the lens. And I'm going to make this, let me see if you can see that. That's a uh, screen capture from SketchUp. And I'm going to make this document available. For the lace stand, I wanted something heavy and solid. I'm using two by sixes and two by eights in the construction. The stand will be constructed using panels that I build out of the two by sixes and two by eights. This is the shelf. It's not glued together. I want to show you the two by eights. I took off, I, I cut off the round over on both sides and I cut the round over off on one side of the two by sixes. So that way I've got nice jointed surfaces to glue together. I use dowels for alignment, strictly to keep the pieces from shifting when I'm clamping them together. The top is going to be fastened to the sides using pocket screws. And those really act as a clamp. I'm going to use glue as well. And the screws can probably be removed and uh, without affecting anything, but I'll probably leave them in. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set that up, and then I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. There's a couple things I forgot to mention. First, the drawing that I showed you does not, in, does not show the drawers that will be on the left side. There will be three drawers, about six inches deep each one. On the right side, there will be a, a tool stand for my lathe tools. The other thing is, and this is very strange, the two-by-eights are actually thicker they're a little bit, they're real close to an inch and a half than the two by sixes. The two by sixes are just under inch and a half, which means that when I did my glue ups, they're not flat on one side. They're flat on the face side, the outside, but on the inside, they're not. And the only problem for that is, well, two problems. One, gluing the legs on makes it so it's an uneven surface. I've had to sand that to make it a, a level surface. And the other thing is when I put the drawers in on the left side, that inside won't be flat, uh, flush across. I'm going to have to do something. I haven't quite decided what to do yet. Here's a shot of what the glue-up looks like. You can see the pocket holes on the inside. Well, it turns out that I get to show you how I made the holes for the dowels. I wound up having to recut the centerpiece for the shelf. Anyway, I've got the new piece. It's the right length. And what I'm using is a joint genie. And it's kind of slick. I looked at a lot of things and decided to buy this one. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube already about this. I'm just going to show you how I do it to make a progression of, of holes. Okay, so this is my, my outside face, the top of the shelf. So that's my reference side. 
and I've got this adjusted to go over as far as it will. It's only a quarter inch dowel uh, jig, so it doesn't go over as far as the larger sizes. You register the end piece against the same end for each piece. Then you clamp it in place on the tabs on this side. Excuse me. Okay, so make sure it's registered on the end. All the way down and then put the clamp on it. Add a second clamp to this tab. And I know that this first hole, which is one, the one that this one's going to line up to. Hold on a second. <clears throat> this is wrong. This is my top face, so that's the one I have to register. When this, so it's that way the holes are toward the top. So my holes need to be on this side. So to do that, you simply... turn everything the other other way. There we go. Okay, you'll be able to see better now too. So I've got this flush against the end. I'll put one clamp on this tab, one clamp on this tab. And I know that this first hole was my third hole in the jig. So we'll drill that. And each other hole is spaced, like I'm going to show you, to the last one here. Okay, take that off. Now we don't need the end piece anymore. So we line this up. I take a bolt, stick it in the first hole, put one clamp on the back one, and I'm registered and I can do the next one. And so on, all the way down the line. Okay, the last one's done on this side. By the way, they make longer ones too. I think they make a 12 inch joint genie. So if you do a lot of long glue ups that uh, you might want that and they have also an extension that allows you to do what I'm doing with the bolt so it gives it a fixed distance uh, that might be a little easier too so now here's a view of the lathe stand with the shelf installed what I did and you can see the pocket holes on top and that was for convenience what I did was I put the centerpiece in first that's this 2 by 8 and then I glued it and then screwed it with the three pocket holes on each side, pocket screws. And then I put the dowels in the edge and glued those in and then uh, pushed in the side piece flush with the center piece. Then I screwed that. So there was some glue between the center pieces and the end pieces. The center pieces glued on the ends, however, and the end pieces of the shelf are not. I think it's plenty strong. It could probably lay on that. And, but it's not going to carry that much weight. So I don't really think it's an issue. And the reason the pocket holes are on top was just so I didn't have to turn it over and do the same thing. This was easier. I had a piece of uh, wood that was a spacer from the top of the workbench to the bottom of the shelf. Exactly what I wanted. It was exactly four inches. So I was able to stick that under there, lay the wood on it, and it's good to go. So here it is in place. The next step is to put the back on. Three, bar, three quarter by three quarter strips to hold the back in and the back will be flush with the two by sixes. Well here we are. The back is on and also the divider is in the front. That's it. I'm shooting into the light, so let's see if I can get the right angle. So there's some three-quarter strips holding the back on. Those are glued and ear nailed into place. And the divider 
have some stripping and that's going to hold that into place and this is my tool holder for the lathes tools it's going to go like that three drawers will go in over here and then we'll call it good i say that a lot don't i well that's my lathe stand video hope you enjoyed it or at least found it entertaining i'll put a link to this document which has a picture from the sketchup file as well as the layout for the wood and the actual sketchup file too will be linked at, in the description for this video. If you liked it, please give me a like, a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, please do so. And I see other guys saying that you have to bring that bell icon in order to make sure that you get the notification. So I don't know what that's about. I think you have to make sure your settings are set properly. So uh, that's it. Thank you for watching.